Good evening, everybody. We're here uh, ahead of our Thursday night training session. I'm pleased to say I'm in the boardroom, which is something I don't get uh, to visit that often on match days. I'm here with our Director of Football, Mick Sullivan. How are you doing, Mick? Good evening, Simon, and good evening all our supporters. Hopefully that they tune in on your website and media accounts. Thank you. We'll get this put out on the socials yeah. as soon as I possibly can. Um, so really, Mick, it's just to catch up with. We spoke a couple of weeks back at one of the last home games. Um, just to sort of clarify your position within the club and, and give, the, give the fans really a bit of an insight to exactly what you were doing in the background to help the club and it's been very well received I said that previously in the last interview um, and really it's just you know what's been happening over the last couple of weeks and how we're getting on so far with the appointment on, of a manager um, well I feel that I've become a manager within the next last couple of weeks because that phone has not stopped um, and that's just me being supportive to Julian, our interim manager at the minute, uh, to help him so he can focus what's going on out on the pitch. Um, and, it, and it's made my mind up that I definitely don't ever want to be a manager again, that's for sure. Um, but a lot of good things have also happened around the club in the last few weeks. Um, the players have got to know myself, I've got to know the players. There's not been a turnaround of players since we've been here the last couple of weeks. Um, so that's on a positive note and hopefully the fans have noticed that the, the players, you know, there's not been a lot of a conveyor belt, let's say, of players. Good. So hopefully they see that as a positive. Um, unfortunately, the result the other week against Bowers and Pitsy is a big disappointment and um, believe you me, if the fans don't know, the players were hurting afterwards and uh, I saw their faces and felt, and I, I got the atmosphere of that dressing room afterwards and particularly Julian it was particularly upset and felt awful towards our fans. And not that I like to see people in that frame of mind and in that mood, but I think I have to share that with our supporters so they understand that the boys do hurt when they're not performing and the manager hurts even more mm. at the minute. So hopefully they will stick with us. Obviously we've got a big game coming up on Saturday against Case. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that in a second okay. so I know you, you know you, you know Hayden very well yeah. at Kingstonian and you, which is great from our mm -hmm. perspective because yeah. you perhaps know a little bit more about them than some of the yeah. people do um, so just looking at our, our last game at home where we lost 2-0 mm -hmm. I think as a fan one of the things that, that I've heard fans say you know how can we play so well in certain matches I mean the week before we had the 4-3 win the last minute winner yeah. um, and then actually when we come home we seem like a very, very different side. I mean, we did. We played well again at Carl Shorten. Okay, we didn't get the win we perhaps should have got, but we gave a really, really good fight. But actually, that last performance at home here, there wasn't much of a fight at all. Listen, I think some of these players probably haven't played in front of crowds that they're now playing in. You know, they're inherited players, but some haven't experienced a crowd that might be negative or whatever. And maybe there's nerves that do play, but in all honesty, if I was watching that game against Bowers and Pitsy on Saturday, the two key areas that, that I felt that we, you know, when two of our most dangerous players in yeah. Eddie, the right winger, and Matt Bentley, when they both come off almost simultaneously, mm. uh, your two big goal Threats. And they were probably our two best players in the first half, I think. Yeah, anyway. most definitely. Yeah. But when they come off, what's your luck then? And, yeah. and the old scenarios are when you're down the bottom, you don't get that luck. And we certainly didn't get that luck when those two come off the pitch. So, Am I right in saying that we, we had two centre-halves that day? And, um, right saying that neither of them were centre-halves? Well, again, centre -halves. I think people need to understand this as well. Both those centre-backs, which we know is a weak area, and it's been very difficult to get people in very quickly. I mean... Um, Julian has been trying quite a lot to get a centre back, mm. but we're playing two centre midfielders as centre backs. And when you analyse the first goal, you know, the player was on the wrong side of him, made a rash challenge, penalty given, yeah. and a proper centre back probably wouldn't have done that. But yeah. that's, we shouldn't be too harsh on those two boys playing no. in there. Han, is it Han, Hanson? Yes. And um, Kelly, is it? Garrett Kelly. Garrett Kelly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Kelly. yeah. Like we shouldn't be too harsh on them because 
they're doing a fantastic job, but they are centre midfield players. So yeah. our centre uh, midfield in the next couple of weeks, I, I can only imagine it's going to be superb. But, yeah. um, and I think that if you look at that challenge for the penalty, that is, dare I say it, a typical centre midfielder's challenge. Isn't yeah, it? You know, just trying to retreat on, on the wrong side, I mean? try wrong and get the position. ball back. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're not idiots. We understand we've got, we got failings within the team, and Julian even more understands that as yeah. our interim manager. So I think everyone around the ground knows there's improvements to be made and they're definitely going to be happening in the Good. next week or two. So I'd like to think, stay strong, stay focused to all our supporters. Support us, particularly this coming Saturday at home to Kays. I think we will need that type of support to try and get us through. And we never know, we might even put a result out of the bag. We never know, I've been praying Have big you? time, absolutely. <laughs> So let's talk about Saturday and, and Case. Big game. Local derby-ish. Well, I, I don't know if I, it's... I, I, think, I think it's always sort of been known. I mean, the local derby, in all honesty, for Case is Corinthians. Yeah. But in all honesty, who have we got around us here? Yeah. Maybe Horsham could be seen as a local derby. You know, look, Case is close. It's, uh, it's going to be treated by some of the Leverhead fans, the old school Leverhead fans will treat that as a derby yeah. most definitely and some and definitely the K's are gonna come here treating it that way. Absolutely. So they'll be vocal, their supporters I know they will. Obviously my friend Hayden Bird will be here, he'll be jovial and they'd be even more jovial if they beaten us in the bar afterwards. But well let's hope we can spoil the party. Do you know much about the current plot the team there, the players? What their players? Yeah. Yeah, I know pretty much. I've watched them. I pretty much feel I'm a supporter of them in all honesty. Right. Yeah, just because I go to their lovely club, lovely people behind the scenes and I enjoy going to watch them. It's uh, it's really ironic that I'm almost like a, a rival now yeah. when I've been treated as a friend there all the time. So, you know, they they'd be fantastic and you know I I, I know whatever the result might be, you know, they'll be treated in the best possible way. There ain't going to be that rivalry off of the pitch between me and them. No. Um, but we know what's coming. They're a tough, they're a good side. They're a passing side um, and probably going to be our biggest test for the last few weeks that we played against. So we know it's a big and tough game ahead this Saturday. And um, if we're not on our metal, then we could well come on start. So all the more important really for all of our fans. And I know it's been tough from there. I've had it tough over the last few months because mm -hmm. of what's been going on yeah. in the club with just the changes of management, the changes of players. Yeah. Um, I think it's all the more important from at this moment in time to come in and support the club. And they've been brilliant, I think. They've been fantastic so far. But we probably need them now more than ever, don't we? Oh, God. We certainly need them more now than ever. Yeah. Um, but there are exciting things that, you know, we... We will come on to it. I know you're going to ask me about it later on in this interview regarding the volunteers. But since my time here over the last couple of weeks, more people have made contact with me to put their self forward to do things. And uh, I, that, that's boosted me inwardly. And I think that this club is on the verge of going forward in lots and lots of ways. We've got our new physio lady that started training tonight, yeah. Olivia Bolton. Who's, we've just introduced her to all the players. They're loving it. So that gives the players even more of a boost. We've not really had a regular physio in here for the last few weeks. So, you know, little little cogs are being sort of filled. Little boxes, as I say, are being filled slowly but surely. The big box hopefully will be filled next week um, going forward. Uh, so I'm looking forward to where, that announcement whenever that's made next week. And, uh, you know, we've been doing our due diligence and getting the right man in. And, uh, you know, I've been, you know, we, we've, I'll tell it openly, we've had 60 odd applicants for the manager's job. So that's wow. 6 applicants, quite unheard of. Um, from all varieties of, even abroad, it's, it's quite amazing to read through all these CVs and that. But we whittled them down to what we think is a, a reasonable shortlist and we still are going to add to that because the closing date is um, Monday, uh, no, Saturday the 1st. So, you know, we're still open to see who might come in late in the day, let's say. But we're quite, I'm quite happy with what we've seen and, um, and what we've got, you know. So, okay. yeah. So we put an advert out earlier today looking for volunteers for the club mic and i know that's something that you've just recently very much touched on yeah. but i just wanted to sort of clarify so just to, for the fans perspective or anyone that wants to get involved in the club from the media side uh, to tell you what we're looking for first of all so we're looking for someone to help us on match days 
Um, we've got Chris who does a fantastic job behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've got George that currently helps me out doing the PA stuff yeah, as well, match good. days. Yeah. Very, very, very good young lad. But we're looking for someone to come on board and perhaps do some photography work or some match day photography. So ideally, we're looking for someone that perhaps it, um, is a keen photographer, perhaps retired from work, wants to come in on a Saturday afternoon, take some sports photography, or even a student that's currently studying photography at school, coming in and learning a bit of their trade uh, on a Saturday afternoon, helping us out on the photography front. Also looking for someone to write some match day reports. So, and the reason why we want that is we want to get a better link between us and the local paper. So Surrey Sports, for example, uh, one of the reasons why they don't do a lot with us is because we don't actually produce match, match reports to be able to send to them so they can right. put it in the paper. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So um, we want to try and sort of build that link again that we used to have a few years ago with Surrey Sports. Uh, and then latterly, the last person, we, we want to sort of bring in someone that can help us on the social networking uploading. So during the courses of, of the games, if there's fans that can't get to the matches, they can keep an eye on, on things like Twitter, uh, where we can have someone that currently uh, can update the fans what's happening during the course of the match. Young Ryan Herrick has been helping us when he's come well, back from uni. Let's, let's remember, son, we've got a big youth set up only down the road at River Lane that have got tons of youngsters and young lads that are all technically and social media wizards. Yep. And if there's any out there that are part of Live Red Youth, they don't have to be part of Live Red Youth, but if they are, and they want to come along. We've already, I think we've already put it out there. We yeah. are offering um, free burger or yeah. free tea or Coke or whatever it is. I know it doesn't seem much in the scheme of things, but you know, that's just our payback for these people or you people out there that will come down and help us down here at Leverett Football Club and bring that community spirit back to our club. And we need people that are leverage focused and and, and, and and be a team work and team player down here. So that's just that element. So we move on some of the other roles we need. We need some stewards uh, on match day. We have to hire in stewards, but preferably I'd like more local people that can just patrol the ground, keep an eye on what's going on and actually report to whoever we decide to be head of the stewards. So we need people that can give their time. You can still be watching the game. It doesn't mean to say that you're in the professional game where they turn their back on the game. They can be watching the game at the same time, but they've got their eyes and ears open for any misdemeanours or anything that's happening around our ground. We need to keep everyone safe. So there's match day stewards that we require. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just trying to think who else we're looking for. We've obviously done the social media side of it. Um, I think, I don't know if there's anything on the catering side we might need, but if there's anyone out there that might be able to help what we've already got on the catering side, Hayley and her sister and her mum do a fantastic job, but sometimes they might need a bit of help Mm. to push us along. Um, What other little roles have we got that require anything you can remember? Well, I mean, if if you look at, at, you've got gate duties, haven't we? We've got people on the gate. Right, okay, these are the big ones now. These are the ones that I feel that we need we need a gate person to help on the turnstiles. We really don't want people queuing out where we've only got one person on that gate. We need someone else to open our second turnstile and so we can make people flow in and they can come and see the game and not be standing in the queue out there for a long time. So anyone that can step up to be a gate person and we can talk regarding that role would be fantastic. Brilliant. And the biggest role that we're really looking for at the minute is a, a club secretary. So before we go on to that, because that is a massive role, yes. um, I think what we should do is, is um, actually pay our compliments to Jeremy, who's been doing that role now for several years. And I think you, you and I know the work that he does, mm-hmm. which is relentless. And it's very, very much appreciated by the people around him that know what he does. But he's been absolutely tremendous, hasn't he, over the last few years? Jeremy Smith, he hadn't stepped up. I, I don't know where we would possibly be at this minute. Mm. Him and Gerald have done a sterling job behind the scenes and I have been quite surprised in my short time here in the role that I'm doing how much they have been doing behind the scenes more than what I ever ever anticipated they were mm. doing so hats off to them in some respects because I weren't thinking that way to be fair beforehand yeah um, but I definitely will take my hat off to both those people um, but you're right you know Jeremy's been doing that role for four years and it's a, it's a demanding role and well, I feel that we need someone more local and it would be a slightly easier role. 
to do the signing on of players. There's a multitude of things which we can drill down if there's someone specifically out there listening to me or us uh, that really fancies having a big role within this football club uh, and wants to integrate with all the fabric of it, then you know, it's a fantastic role as much as it's quite a demanding role at the same yeah, time. I mean, what I would say from the knowledge that I've got, little knowledge mm-hmm. that I've got from what goes on in the background in the club, certainly because of, there's been a lack of, of volunteers coming forward, yeah. th- the job that Jeremy's been doing isn't necessarily just the secretary's job. He's been doing quite a lot more, hasn't he? Yeah. So I think what we need to get clear is, yes, it's a big job, but it won't be anything like what Jeremy's doing because what we're looking to do is actually look at that role and perhaps divide some of those duties up from up with other people because it is a hell of a well, lot. Well, look, let's give credit to the other people that do a sterling job in Peter Mann, our matchday yes, secretary. Absolutely. Is that, and is it Kevin Williams? Kevin is our fixture secretary. Yeah. You know, so whoever is taking the secretary role, you've already got two people supporting that role. Yeah. So if people understand what the secretary role is, they will almost be jumping up with glee the fact that those two elements have already been taken away from them because right. we have got good people still doing things behind yeah. the scenes. We just want to add to it and, and bring a match day experience so much better for new people and existing people that are down here. We want to make that so much better for everyone. Mm. And, you know, I'll go back to the amount of people that are playing in our youth setup that if they want to come down here with their sons and their son wants to be take an active part or young lad or young lady want to take an active part from our women's side as included um, and maybe they have to come with an elder that, then they won't be paying to get in well will they that you know they will have free entry with that person if they're doing a role within our football club Brilliant. we want to to make it a little bit more not I suppose exciting, but we want to make it a little bit more, uh, how can I put it? A bit more attractive. Yeah, more attractive, yeah. a great word, yeah. yeah. More attractive for someone to come down here and do the thing. Yeah. And the most thing, you will be made welcome and, you know, we want that team community back. And I know the supporters are really dying for that. Mm. And I intend to try and give them that as much as I can mm. with my contacts um, and you know, the people that I know, to just start the ball rolling with it. But we need people now to sort of jump onto the train yeah. now. I agree. And, and I, I came here three, four years ago, um, initially just to watch the football. Mm-hmm. My son got involved with Alfie Gates yeah. taking pictures. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm asked to play music and do the PA stuff. Yeah. And I was talking to Chris, our videographer, the other week, and we were talking about it. And I, you know, I just said to him after a game, I really do appreciate what you do. You do a great job. The video footage you, you, that you produce is fantastic. Um, and he said, you know what? He looked at me and he actually said to me, Mick, he said, he said, I actually really enjoy it. I really enjoy doing it. It's giving something back. And what else am I going to do on a Saturday afternoon? And actually that sort of, to me, summed up the role of a volunteer. You'll be surprised once you get involved in it, if you've never done it before, when you get engrossed into it and you get known by the fans, by the players, by the management, it becomes all the more enjoyable. And that's why I think it would be great if we could get some more people involved because they would definitely enjoy the experience. Yeah, and you know, as I say, when I was here as a manager a few years ago, it was a fantastic atmosphere in the bar after the game. Oh, granted, we were winning games, of course, at that point, so everyone's happy. But generally, you know, there was a community spirit about the place. And, you know, I never used to leave it till gone seven o'clock, you know what I mean? Simply because it was an enjoyable atmosphere to yeah. be around. More people that were local, and so people didn't have to shift off straight after the game. Yeah. They would stay and have a drink, or even an orange juice or whatever, and socialise after the game. And I was rather hoping that we can maybe get that community spirit back at Leverhead. And when that starts happening, it does not affect what goes on on the pitch. Yeah. And um, I think the club have been lacking that for the last, I'd say, at least five or six years. Mm. I've been lacking that element. We had the great FA Cup time with Sammy Moore. And, you know what I mean? You know what? We, we've had some good times, to be fair, with certain parties in the past. We have. But I still think that we have lost that little community spirit side of it. Yeah. And uh, that's a big part of my remit to try and happen again here at Leverett Football Club. Well, fingers crossed, we'll get that back. Mm-hmm. It certainly won't be through the lack of trying. I know that much. I know how much you're putting in as well mm-hmm. behind the scenes, help certainly helping Julian uh, and Jeremy 
and Gerald as well with your football knowledge, which uh, you know doesn't go unnoticed, Mick, as well. So, um, anything else you want to add before Saturday's game for the fact? Little message for the fans, perhaps. Well, I'll just hope that Kays have a bit of an off day uh, for a start. Hayden, if you hear this, mate, come down, have an off day, give us a little bit of a chance. Um, and then basically, I think the boys, from what I can see tonight, that you know they are they're good good lads, and basically, I know they're going to give everything on Saturday. And who knows? That's we don't know. Nice. We know what football's like. There might be a shock on the horizon. Yep. There might be. You never know. And on that note, Mick, thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you down there on Saturday. You'll see me down there, mate. Will do. Top man. Thanks, Mick. Thank you. Cheers, mate.